Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Monstober video. Currently we are in the Boogeyman week and I could not let this week go by without talking about Stephen King's It. I've mentioned this on the last couple of live streams, how it is my favorite Boogeyman story, but I didn't have a chance to really delve into it. And I want to give as much of an analysis slash review as I can here within the limited amount of time I usually keep my videos to. I should say, though, that I actually didn't read it until quite recently. It was shortly before the recent film came out. I decided it was about time to actually read the book before the next movie came out. As a child, though, I remember that TV movie with Tim Curry and the great cast that it had. Just so many wonderful people there. And that, that little miniseries affected me so deeply, as did it my friends as well. I remember growing up, we were in elementary school, and in my house, we didn't even receive that channel. This was the days before cable and out in a rural area or whatever, but a friend of mine down the road could pick up the channel that they were airing that miniseries on, and I remember on the school bus, at the next two days after the each part would air, he would tell me the story of it. So not even watching the film, but just hearing the story of it secondhand through another childhood friend immediately creeped me out. And then, of course, I did see the images of Pennywise on advertisements and whatnot. Eventually, I was able to go ahead and watch the film for myself. That ramped up the creepiness to a whole other level. And eventually, I read the book before seeing the remake. But the story is built on such a seminal fear in that hero's journey with the Losers Club combating this primal evil, this primal fear-feeding demon, that I think it strikes anyone who gives the story a chance. Stephen King himself said that he had the idea for this book from the old Three Billy Goats Gruff fairy tale, Crossing the Troll Bridge, and he liked the idea of this troll living under this bridge, and what if the bridge was a town? What if there was this evil, deep-seated evil living in a town that affected it generation after generation, and the evil was an actual entity? Now, this is nothing new to Stephen King fans. King does have a certain amount of tropes and themes that he revisits time and time and time again. He liked the idea of the small town harboring some sort of evil, whether it's Salem's Lot, whether it's Castle Rock, or whether it's Derry, Maine, and that evil can either be an actual entity underground feeding on it and creating it, or it can simply be an outsider coming in, like Mr. Gaunt or Mr. Barrow or whatever. But he has a rather pessimistic view of small towns and their and their manners and their motives and whatnot. At least you can see it that way. On the other hand, he often depicts children as heroes. He highlights the innocence and he sets them up as, a, as powerful entities because of that innocence children are. He'll often talk too about a primal goodness that is the overcomer of the villains and monsters in his stories. Not religion or anything like that, but something that would even predate that in his tales. We see this with Alan, for example, when he drives the stake through Barrow's heart in Salem's Lot. He begins to glow with a holiness, but it, he says it predates Christianity. It predates any sort of religion. It's just this primal goodness or whatever. In Needful Things, of course, we see the sheriff as the one who the devil fears. Not a priest, not a preacher. They're easily manipulated into the, the controversies and, and little fights among town and whatnot. But the sheriff is a thinking man, and he's one who can evaluate and think and try to bring justice and whatnot. These are elements that Stephen King weaves into his work, and they just fell so perfectly together in it. I also should mention that Peter Straub, another artist I'm discovering recently who's quite a classic, he authored Ghost Story that I recorded a video on. Apparently he published a book entitled Floating Dragon shortly before it, and this is a book that is said to have influenced Stephen King in writing it. I haven't read Floating Dragon yet, but I look forward to. Apparently the two of them would influence each other throughout, and they've co-written some books together as well. But it is a hefty book. It, it truly is a long tome, and Stephen King usually does place in a lot more than he needs to in stories, and he did with it as well. There are certain places where he wants to stop and give you a character's extensive backstory when you really didn't need to know that about the character to feel the impact of the story or to understand what was going on forward. So that's one of his weaknesses of the writer. He does like to infuse as much backstory as possible about everybody and everything, but it's easily, easily forgivable because of the nature of this story. And I'm trying not to spoil anything for those who might not have seen any of the movies, or maybe you've only seen the movie and you've never read the book. And if that's so, you are doing yourself a drastic disservice, because no movie has ever done the book complete justice. But the most recent film that most people nowadays have probably seen, 
only scratched the surface of the childhood story in that book. I know they're going to do a sequel with the adults and everything, but just even with the stories from their perspective as children, it only scratched the surface. It was really not a very good adaptation of it. It was a fine horror film in its own right, but it was not a very good adaptation of it at all. The 1990 film was a good adaptation, but it still could only bring in so much from such a long book. So I won't spoil anything, but just to give you the context of this, Pennywise, the clown, is this entity, and you find out that Stephen King draws on a very Lovecraftian idea. These are entities, primal evil entities from space even, and it gets a little trippy at that point, and you can sort of take it or leave it. It's not really ingrained in the plot for you to need to understand or need to think of it in that manner, but you do get the idea that Pennywise was this primal spider form who came to Earth, crashed down to Earth, and sort of a meteorite, and this is a Lovecraftian idea. He did this with Cthulhu and his other monsters there. But the idea of a spider, that's something that people have a primal fear of. You don't need to learn fear of spiders. They move unnaturally. They're so foreign to our mammalian brains, and we have an evolutionary fear of them, if you even want to think of it in that manner. Then he also featured a turtle, who was a protective force that tried to help the children at one point. And a turtle is a great choice for that because of the shell, protection, shielding, sort of motherly or whatever. But the reason I bring up the spider thing there is that it taps into a primal fear, and it is preying on the fear of children. That's who he really likes to consume, and he needs them afraid. He needs their fear. And that is the classic boogeyman, because as we talked about the boogeyman in our live streams, and I hope to still be able to do a boogeyman archetype, I don't know if I will at this point since we've talked it to death, but the idea of a boogeyman is that primal fear as a child. It's completely overpowering any type of reason. It can run to any level. You can be afraid of anything in the world that could be in the dark. There is no end to the possibilities that could be there in the dark with that boogeyman or the things that they might do to you or the type of boogeyman they are or what they look like or whatever. That childhood brain just concocts all of these horrid images and horrid fears as we grow up of course we can temper that with certain rationalities and the things that affect us as we grow up become more adult like fears fear of making the mortgage payment or fear of doing this or that but there's still something that'll affect us no matter how adult we are about that primal fear of what's in the dark and that's something that we don't always exercise well as adults because we tend to want to just brush it aside but that's a fear that remains in our psyche nonetheless that we give vent to when we watch good horror stories and that's one way to do so and Pennywise just nails that so well because he embodies each of the children's fears if they see a horror film recently or they are afraid of a certain type of monster or whatever he will take that form when he stalks and attacks each individual child he is able to possess to a certain point certain adults who give over to that so the idea that adulthood is to be feared as well Adults have a large amount of power over children, and he's infested the town to the point where even the adults are either enacting evil on others or simply turning a blind eye to it. And that's a terrifying thing as a child, too, because you're truly powerless as a child. You're powerless in the world of adults, and you're powerless among all the many things that you would fear out there in the world. And that's where the boogeyman is born. So I do recommend it. I really recommend the book. You just need to read the book. It's a long book. If you're not used to reading or you're not used to reading long books, the audiobook is fine. It will take you on quite a journey. I would love to do a more in-depth analysis of it, talking about certain scenes, but for this month anyway, I just want to recommend titles to people. Past the book, I definitely recommend the 1990 miniseries with Tim Curry as Pennywise. That was a wonderful, wonderful adaptation. Of course, no adaptation can do the book complete justice. But it still kept all of the characters, it kept their meanings and their importance and their gifts, and it kept the real danger of Pennywise, and it kept the meaning between their conflicts between the two. The film that recently came out wasn't a bad film at all. It was a good horror film, but as I said, it just was not a very good adaptation of it. I know it's only part one, I know they're doing part two, and I hope part two fixes some things, but already with just in part one, they've already altered some of the characters and changed some of the things that the characters are doing and what they're supposed to stand for or what they're supposed to bring to the Losers Club. And it skipped over so much that needed to have been established in the childhood story there for the adult story to be so much more effective. So pretty disappointed in the film as an adaptation, but I am looking forward to the sequel just as a horror film. I hope it's another good horror film at the least. The effects were certainly much better now, having progressed over so many years. But I don't care how much the effects have progressed. Pennywise, Tim Curry, that voice, and and that 
evil was really something. That's another thing about the recent movie. They changed the time period, so it's no longer children in the 50s or 60s there. It's now children in the 80s. And I understand the marketing reason for why they did that, because there's a big 80s push of nostalgia right now, and they wanted to tap in on that. And certain things can still work, but they didn't really exploit it how it could have worked. They should have had Pennywise in that case embodying the fears of children in the 80s. Let him appear as Freddy Krueger, or let him appear, or at least monsters like that if they can't do the copyright infringement or whatever. That would have been a nice use of that era, but they didn't. And as a result, it just feels kind of emptiness besides the nostalgia of the era. Whereas the original book set in the, was it late 50s, early 60s, I forgot exactly which one, but you've got children there who would have watched Bozo the Clown on TV. So a clown is not innately terrifying to a child of that era. It's supposed to be innately safe. It's supposed to be funny. This is something that we can interact with, not turn around and run terrified from. And you see that with Tim Curry's Pennywise. At first, he does just look like a clown. If you didn't know anything about him or the movie or anything, you would just think it's a clown. But then, with that voice and those teeth and those eyes or whatever, he can give you that look of malice and really transform it into a safe, funny, childhood-friendly character to something terribly evil and terrifying. Whereas, you look at the end of the recent movie... And there's great effects, it's a great horror monster, but you never look at Pennywise in the recent film and think, oh, it's just a childhood clown, it's just sort of a safe clown. There's no there's no uncanny fear there. He's evil even when he's not really going full out and transforming evil. And it's creepy, as I said, it makes a good horror film, but just not a very good adaptation of Pennywise from the book. But let me know your thoughts on this. I would love to know if anybody has actually read the book. That was what I would really like to know. I know a lot of people have seen the movie and will, of course, want to defend the movie as being wonderful and blah 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 But if you haven't read the book, then you really can't speak to my comments about the movie as an adaptation of the book. I'm giving you the fact that the book was a great horror film, absolutely. Great cast and a well-done film in itself. I'd also like to know if you've seen the 1990 miniseries. That's such a classic. Sometimes it gets a bad rap, but it really was a a classic for its time. So I'll be back with more Boogeyman stuff. Of course, we're going to have the live rewatch of Halloween. I will try to get to that archetype video before the week passes us by, but of course I'm very excited about next week because at long last we will enter into our werewolf week. So thanks to everybody watching, clicking like, subscribing. Appreciate all of my patrons on Patreon. The links are in the description below. And until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the Halloween stories you love. Thanks for watching.